Hey guys, I have a quick question for you. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? If so, well, you might want to consider Anchor. So when Jesse and I first started doing this, we had a lot of questions. We had no idea what we were doing. How do we record an episode? How do we even get it out there to people? And truth be told, Anchor, which is the app we use to record this, made all of this incredibly simple. We are both what you could call technologically challenged, and we can use this with simplicity. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, just go to anchor.fm slash start. You can make a profile, and honestly, you can start recording probably within five minutes. Hit an upload button, and it automatically adds it to all these platforms that you listen to us on. So again, that's anchor.fm slash start, and you can get started right away. in your body right so if you're if you're pounding uh cokes for breakfast <laughs> like i was at the airport last month get that I was going cola. to bc coming back i'm like your internal clock's a little bit fl- thrown off if you're traveling it was like 9 30 in the morning people are like crushing cokes and donuts at the same time like that i don't want to sit beside that guy on the plane <laughs> right like that's gonna get be a going. problem that's gonna be a problem yeah. for sure so if you're just constantly beating yourself down um, and beating that defense system down yeah, and keeping that the system that keeps that out the connection between your gut and your brain health that you just explained in great detail and like that was a perfect explanation <laughs> it makes perfect sense um, not going to feel good yeah no the gut is absolutely insane like 2018 we think we know a ton about the human body Fuck that. We know next to nothing about the gut. Some of these things I explain, like that discovery of the connection between the gut and the brain via the lymphatic system, that was discovered something like only like two years ago. So imagine that, like 2015, 2016, every anatomy textbook in the world, throw it out. We got to (laughs) rewrite it because we just found something new about the gut. And I can tell you that in terms of again, more connections between the gut and the brain. It doesn't even have to be a direct, you know, it doesn't even have to be that direct highway. It can be, it can be indirect signals. So something happens in the gut and we don't even know how, but somehow this changes what's going on in the brain. Like this, this field in general right now is just absolutely blowing up and we, we know next to nothing about it. I mean, just to give you another couple examples of this, because I find it super interesting and I think most other people would as well if they're aware of it. So one example I can give you is, again, this is mice studies because you can't really try this shit in humans. So you can give, you can induce, um, we'd call it multiple sclerosis like pathology in a mice because mice can't actually have MS, but you can initiate that in a, in a mouse um by giving something called eae i think it's called i can't think of the full the full form of it right now so you give the mouse this they have pathology that is like multiple sclerosis and then what researchers have found is that you can actually improve um the outcome or you can improve the kind of the status of the disease in mice if you take care of their gut microbiome So just by giving them something like probiotics, you improve the way their brain looks in the mice that have MS. But the crazy part is if you transfer this gut bacteria from that mouse that has taken the probiotics, if you transfer their turds, the turds from the the gut of the healthy mice, you take their turds, you transfer them into a mouse with MS with an unhealthy gut who is experiencing um, severe MS like pathology, they then experience an improvement just after receiving this shit from the other mouse. So this is called a fecal transplant. So they transplant the feces from one mouse to the other, and then they replicate that improvement in brain health. Like it's fucking crazy. You're just transferring literally shit from one mouse to another and somehow it's improving brain health. Like it's crazy. Yeah. If that doesn't explain 
why gut health is yeah. so important to your brain health, then like we lost you somewhere. <laughs> and uh, yeah. just just start yeah, start the, start it all start the whole episode over. Go to the beginning and listen to yeah. Chet's whole spiel because that pretty. Much- Ancestors were you know they were still hunting the woolly mammoth and that type of thing. Whether or not you believe in this sort of thing. There's a lot of science to support that those are the people that we came from and this happened. But anyways, so these people would have been forced to go long periods of time without food. Um, probably at a minimum, maybe 20 hours a day. Probably quite often they would have been forced to go maybe even two, three days without food. And then when they would eat all their food at once. So the people who survived probably needed mechanisms in place to allow them to continue to function during these times of no food so they still needed brain health they still needed energy to drive their muscles to kind of hunt that animal or whatever it may be and so one belief or theory is that these benefits from intermittent fasting came from this so kind of the body sort of like ramps up all its protective mechanisms in the absence of food to allow one to survive and then you eat and this kind of comes back down to baseline so that's one theory that one makes a lot of sense to me. The other one is a little bit, it's a little bit trickier, but it's kind of intriguing. So um, it kind of suggests that intermittent fasting or fasting is similar to sleep in that it's actually, it's there and it's simply designed to recover us and to restore us. So we can all agree that sleep is necessary for recovery. If we miss out on good sleep, we feel like shit. So some people suggest that um, this fasting back in the day was simply a mechanism to repair, repair people, repair the cellular damage and whatnot. And this one seems a little far fetched, but when you consider that the fast happens to occur at the same time as sleep, it makes a little bit more sense. Cause what if fasting and sleep were just hand in hand and then the benefits of fasting just continued a little bit longer once the sleep ended. Um, Another kind of quick piece that supports this one a little bit more is that if you go into a sleep not fasted, so if you eat something immediately before bed, some of those repair mechanisms that take place when when you sleep are impaired. So as an example, um, if you eat a shit ton of carbohydrates right before you go to bed, you will not get secretion of human growth hormone throughout the night as you sleep. So human growth hormone is, again, another one of those essential hormones that is responsible for repair of bones, connective tissue, muscle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you've probably heard of it because it's abused in sports. Of repair mechanisms are initiated when we actually do not eat food. Um, so to go into a couple of these, um, there's one thing called cellular autophagy. So autophagy, autophagy, I've never known whether or not I pronounced that correctly, but this is, this is the cleanup of essentially dead and dying cells, or just, it's the cleanup of cellular debris throughout your body and brain. So throughout our lifetime, we just naturally accumulate this cellular garbage. Um, a failure to clean up this garbage leads to all sorts of health risks. So these cells for one can um, begin to clump together and actually form tumors. So this is one of the way that cancers form is if we have a failure of cell autophagy. Um, these cells can also begin to form what are called senescent cells. So this is just when these dead and dying cells just kind of hang around. You can picture this kind of like your, your 40 year old son that's laying at home on the couch doesn't get a job he just lays at home and games all day leaves pizza boxes around farts smells like shit he's leaving garbage everywhere and it's just not letting the home function like it could so these senescent cells just hang around and they begin to release inflammatory molecules and this is going to lead to chronic inflammation and we all know that that also elevates risk for disease illness And again, if you're chronically inflamed, you're just not going to feel as good as you could. You're not going to perform athletically, physically as well as you could. So back to the start. So fasting increases cell autophagy. So it increases the rate that we can clean up this cellular debris and this cellular garbage. 
So actually during a fast, cellular, cellular autophagy can increase by upwards of 500%. Um, and this is probably one of the reasons why after an extended fast, you come out of it and just feel like crazy good. It's, it's really bizarre. Like if you do a longer one, I did a five day fast one time, came out of it and <clears throat> it's pretty insane how good you feel. Just your well being, your state of mind is off the charts. And this is probably one of the reasons why, um, a couple other examples of what fasting actually triggers within our body. So we also have, we have an elevation in our metabolic rate. So the actual rate at which we're burning calories, burning energy increases. So again, this is going to lead to that side effect of weight loss or fat loss. Um, Boom. Uh, that I'm was a of, lot. I'm out of breath. Woo. Okay. Let me recover for a second. All right. One thing that I can take, I can take from that a lot of any nutritional changes carry the weight of an attachment or like emotion surrounding food, right? So yeah. what it sounds like this fasting can do by default improving how you feel, your well being is gonna improve because you're making better choices. Yeah. One one thing with any nutrition program, right? The ones that work are the ones that you actually stick to. That's the silly part. And it's the same thing with a fitness program, right? I could write the shittiest program ever, but if somebody sticks to that program for eight weeks, they're going to yeah, see improvement, right, yeah. right? Especially if they're a beginner. Especially if they're a beginner. Yeah. It's like, ride that wave, man. You're new. You're going to see so many benefits so fast. It's going to be the best eight weeks of your life. Yeah. This nutrition thing is going to work the exact same way, right? You have a choice in everything. The first couple days of this experience, I'm sure, well, you did five full days, okay, so you can kind of walk us through how that felt like. Yeah, that was My question is like, when, it, for me, if I tried to fast for five days, I, I feel like I would lose it. I get, yeah. you know that hangry feeling? Oh, yeah. Where you feel like you're going to murder somebody for no reason, like, your girlfriend, like, says hi to you, and, like, for whatever reason, they're like like burns your soul like on, a, on like a weird you're like you don't even you have no control it's just like burning you yeah. don't even know what's happening until it's already happened uh like how how do you get and then like where do you get past that hangry point to the point where you start to feel like this clarity that you're talking about because i'm yeah. sure those of us that are doing this program if we're so used to getting up at say say we start work at eight we're getting up at six thirty. we have kids get ready for school um, got to take the dog out. Yeah. Whatever, whatever makes your life so hard, right? Like everybody has their stuff. So your hard life, your hard life in the morning that you have, that usually results in you just stopping at Timmy's on the way to work and grabbing a uh, English muffin or a bagel and uh, double, double. Yep. Jim Norton's. I, I'm making, I'm making <laughs> somebody up right now. If this is you, I'm sorry. Like, but maybe you just need to hear this. So if, for that person that's just taking this food by default, it's like, oh, I'm, 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 I've had a rough morning. I'm getting hangry. I got to go to work and, and deal with my coworkers or boss or like yeah. whatever the hardship is there now, right? Basically, what I'm saying, like, it's not that hard. I'm just trying to make it sound like basically, oh, yeah, ask somebody, be. how's your day going? Oh, living the dream. But really, it's <laughs> like, it's been shit, yeah. right? Um, how does that person break through that? really the habit and routine of just eating all the time and just grabbing yeah. whatever's convenient. That is the million dollar question. Um, so just to revisit that five day fast for a second, I should say that just please don't try that if you've never done a little bit of intermittent fasting before. So before I did that, I, I did do some regular intermittent fasting. I was doing almost 16 hours on a daily basis. I would throw in like the odd 24 hours. So that surprisingly was not that difficult for me to do. Um, and actually, if you're on a budget, this is a great strategy to save some money. <laughs> I saved a shit ton of money. Um, but yeah, don't just try it. So for that fast, the hardest part was probably around, I don't know, I would say about kind of roughly going into the two day mark that was when I had a little bit of the hangriness but honestly that probably lasted about half a day and then after that it was pretty well smooth sailing um my belief for that is that I probably had um ketones ramp up in my body and brain 
So again, this is one of those survival mechanisms that's triggered when we don't eat. So this is when we have no more stored carbohydrates, so no more stored glycogen. Well then, our body reaches into our, literally our stored fat. It begins to convert that stored fat into what are called ketone bodies. There's a few different ketone bodies, but the main one is um, BHB or beta hydroxybutyrate. So this is created in the liver and then this BHB is actually a usable energy source for our entire body, um, for our muscles, for our heart, for our brain. So this is how you continue to function and survive during that period of fasting. It's that you create these ketone bodies. Um, so these actually have appetite suppressing effects. These are also what contribute to probably some of the mental clarity actually that you experience later in that fast, which is absolutely crazy to imagine that you can actually experience mental clarity when you haven't eaten for five days. But anyways, that's another tangent. Um, how does someone actually begin to incorporate this into their life? Yes, tricky. So my emphasis for this program was just improve. So no matter where you are right now, maybe you're at six hours of fasting overnight maybe you have to wake up early and crush that pb and j sandy i actually used to have to do something similar to that when i was younger even in my university days um maybe you're already at 10 hours whatever just aim for improvement go for add even an extra 30 minutes for week one anybody can do that i don't care who you are you can push that back 30 minutes and then you just gradually begin to push that back. You don't wanna push it back too far. I mean, you don't wanna, it's probably not beneficial to be fasting for 20 hours every day. Again, that's a separate story. Some people can pull that off, but in my opinion, it's not the best practice. Um, so the goal was just improvement. Um, you can come up with you know whatever trick you need to to make that work. Something that's worked for me is I'll try a warm glass of water, maybe with some Himalayan sea salt. Um, it seems to really cut the appetite for whatever reason. I don't know why. And maybe it's just the warm water, actually. I kind of enjoy drinking that. So that's, that's one trick I found to work for just me. But again, everyone's different. Um, for me, it's easier to do these during times when you're busiest, because then you don't actually have time to think about the food. Um, but you just have to find whatever that trick is that works for you and stick with it. And I think once people kind of break that initial habit and realize that, oh, okay, I don't actually need that piece of food immediately, immediately when I wake up, it's kind of, it becomes sort of empowering and you just kind of go with it. You'll start to experience some of the benefits. Um, again, many, many people report that after doing this on a consistent basis, they no longer have that kind of grogginess in the morning. They just feel fresh. They feel kind of clear headed. Um, so again, everyone's going to be different. So I don't have that one answer, but you just have to find what works for you. Um, and I mean, I should say in terms of athletic performance, there's times when you don't want to do this. Like if you're in the middle of a competition, you do not want to be going for a 24 hour fast. Like I did Murph today and tomorrow we got Linda, but I think I'm going to slip in a 24 hour fast here and see how I feel for the next event. There's times to do it. There's times to not do it. So that's what, again, that's what makes nutrition so confusing. There's never one simple answer. We've kind of been led to believe that there is, but for probably 90% of people, I think they would really, really benefit from doing this. So just try and find, um, again, whatever it is, that trick that works for you. Yeah, I think what that will do for people is give them a sense of control over their day, right? That chaos of like running that's, around yeah, in the morning, it's like yeah. just freaking out. Yeah. It's like, oh, I got so many things to do today. When really, if, if you were just in control, right? Like uh, driving past... Let's, I'm going to go back to my same example. Driving past at Tim Hortons and just going to work, delay that morning coffee, yeah. delay that first meal a little bit. You've made a choice. You stuck to your choice. Now you're in control. And then every choice after that for your entire day yeah, I like is that one a that lot. you've That's, chosen yeah. Yeah. instead of one that you're just yeah. defaulting to. And I think that's what the, 
it gives you that uh, empowerment. Yeah. Which is It's valuable. huge, yeah. Yeah. And that's going to carry you throughout your entire day. Yeah, totally. I think I should add to that kind of a compromise if you just for whatever reason can't seem to get into that fast. There is a couple ways that make it easier. You don't get the full benefit of the fast, but you still get some. So that, that's what I mean. It's a nice compromise. So one of those being you could have what's kind of called a... I like to call it the brain ignition coffee, but if I did that, I'd probably get sued for copyright. So <laughs> we'll just call it like the fatty coffee. So this is where you would add, uh, there's a number of options. You could add like one teaspoon to a tablespoon of either a coconut oil or an MCT oil to your coffee. Um, you could even mix in um, a teaspoon to a tablespoon of grass fed butter. There's other options, even full fat cream as a choice. So this is a compromise because you're still getting some of the benefits and that's because you're suppressing insulin in the morning um, as opposed to when you get that double double or maybe you get that uh, what the apple fritter donut or whatever you're going for that's going to spike your insulin and this is this is really what leads to that mid-morning late afternoon crash and you're not getting any of the uh, benefits of fasting so this fatty coffee can suppress insulin and give you still some of the benefits um and a, even a black coffee again you're not going to get the full benefit but this one i think you do still get I, it's not in from what i understand it's not fully known how much of the benefits a black coffee would prevent i actually when i did my five day fast i would have one small cup of black coffee every morning so i guess in that sense i cheated a little um but from measuring a couple biomarkers of my blood and just monitoring how I felt throughout that fast, I felt that I still did experience a ton of benefit from it. So that's another option. Coffee can serve as an appetite suppressant too. So that might make these things a little easier. And again, if you weren't doing that before, that's improvement. And then you're going to just right. build on top of that. Like anything in life, you're just going to improve based on what you've done, not what Jiminy Cricket or whoever else is, yeah. uh, doing the same yeah exactly i think a big thing with um <clears throat> this kind of happened with the paleo craze too is once people got the green light to eat these fatty foods or add these fatty foods into their diet it was like open season crushing full bags of <laughs> cashews like yeah don't be silly right <laughs> come on now right. if you're gonna crush a whole bag of cashews that's like two thousand probably gonna a bulk bag. up a little you're yeah. gonna have a bit of a problem okay so don't be silly be within reason and don't take advantage of the stuff that's in the yeah. program and blow it out of proportion, right? Everything you that's got, right, you got to yeah. take, you got to be, got to make the wise choice. And still chips are high in fat, but no, it doesn't mean we're going right. off crushing a bag of chips. Come on now. You know what he's talking about. Don't be silly. <laughs> you know what he's saying? Okay. Something I read, maybe concerned. I didn't, I didn't know this was a thing. All right. World health organization has classified shift working. Oh as shit. A carcinogen. Yeah. What? the fuck okay most people i know work shift work and i mean you can just know like looking at them some days it's like their eyes go for miles right they're like on the floor <laughs> yeah. and you ask them how they are and they're like oh i'm good I'm like dude you look terrible <laughs> right like something's wrong yeah. so it's clear that whether it be the environment or the schedule or whatever it's not great but do you know how and why this has now become a thing I was just looking at our maximum recording time. We got about uh, 15 minutes left. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so that is crazy stuff. I have some ideas. This one I'm still learning more and more about. Right now I'm, <clears throat> I'm trying to kind of tweak this nutrition stuff in a way that would actually benefit these shift workers because I've found next to no useful information out there for these people. And if you look at who these people are, usually they're the people that are keeping society going and helping us the most. It's the cops, it's the nurses, it's the doctors, it's the firemen and so on. So that's kind of a political issue on its own in that society's kind of failed these people to give them the proper resources. But anywho, if we actually look at <clears throat> how these people or why these people kind of suffer some negative side effects... A lot of it goes back to that, this idea that we repair during sleep. Um, we restore our body, we restore our brain. 
we kind of speed up all these cellular repair mechanisms. Um, but the trick to this is it's not just sleep that promotes this recovery. It's sleep at nighttime. It's sleep during the darkness. Um, so we kind of have this complex system where our brain and body without us even knowing is able to detect whether or not it's daytime or it's nighttime. So this is called your circadian rhythm. Um, this is sort of controlled by, so it starts with your eyeballs. Um, your eyeballs feed into um, what's called your suprachiasmatic nucleus, super S, we'll call it SCN because I can't <laughs> pronounce it. And through this connection, so through your eyeballs, which is detecting sunlight, it's detecting whether or not it's light or dark out. Um, these mechanisms are what control all of our basic survival mechanisms. So they're controlling um, when you feel energized, when you feel sleepy, um, even when you want to get it on in the sack. This is a very powerful mechanism that's controlling all of these basic human survival mechanisms. And it's extremely difficult to trick this system. So even people who are sleeping during the daytime, your body and brain is aware of that. And all of these recovery mechanisms are simply not triggered. So some of these same repair mechanisms that I discussed earlier, like that cleanup of cellular garbage or um, that human growth hormone that's repairing connective tissue, muscles, and all of that. These are two examples of probably a long, long list of re um, repair mechanisms that I'm not even aware of that these people just simply are not getting. Um, so that's why people who are working shift work a goal should be to take every possible precautionary measure, measure possible to try and trick this system as much as you can. Um, so that includes um, if you're sleeping during the day, you need to absolutely black the shit out of your blinds. You shouldn't even be able to see your hand in front of your face because once your brain detects that it's daytime, it'll immediately shut off all these repair mechanisms. Um, there's other things. So even things like wearing what are called blue light blocking glasses, they look pretty geeky, but these can block sunlight from getting into your eyes again, which would affect this circadian rhythm. Um, they also have some kind of cool gadgets these days that you can shine into, you can shine it into your ear, or shine it into your nose, which is kind of funky. But what this does is, excuse me, it can wake you up. It tricks your brain into thinking that it's daytime, so it kind of delivers an artificial sunlight to your brain. So it wakes you up when you're going into your um, shift at nighttime, and it kind of tricks your body into thinking that it's daytime instead. Um, so lots of things that these people can do, and that's kind of one of the things, that's one of the programs that I hope to offer in the future, actually. Right on. <clears throat> It's good to know that there's so many resources out there for people. Shift work's a reality for some people. Um, I This is never a popular statement that I make, but, I mean, it's a choice, right? No, like, yeah, absolutely. And they're like, no, it's my job. I was like, I well, know, you yeah. applied, man. Yeah. I mean, like, it's it's a harsh reality, and I, it I is, mean yeah. it from, like, the most caring place possible because I want people to be as healthy as possible. But it's like yeah. there are other things out there for you to do. So if that isn't working for you and you're compromising your health to make money come on man i yeah. mean for me i like okay again being brutally honest i make money off of people that want need or want to improve their health okay whether it be or performance performance a whole different side of things but like what keeps the doors at the gym open is people that are unwell and they're coming to us be, to become more well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so it's a, it's a business, but I don't want to make money off people because they're sick. Okay, it's like a weird moral and like ethical battle that I go through every single day because I'm looking at people that aren't well becoming well and it's super exciting. But I feel Shit, so yeah. bad that their body got to that point and it's because they just weren't putting themselves first. Yeah. Right? Like you got, 
if if your job is giving you cancer, quit your fucking job. <laughs> yeah. There's so many other I things know. that you can do. Yeah. The possibilities are endless. It's 2018. You can make money off your couch, right? You can. Uh, yeah, your computer. absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to do what you're doing. Please make the change now. If you're somebody that's like shift work, I got to do it. I can't get out. Okay, I don't believe you, but go for it. If that's your if that's your story, then you are very lucky to have people like Chet in this program that have the knowledge to help you maximize your health in the best way possible while your body is yeah. being thrown to a complete loop. Um, so get in on the get in on the program. Yeah, get in. Right? Um, learn as much as possible from Chet. And these, these principles are something that if you're stuck in that position and there's no escape for you, then at least you can take every precautionary measure in order to make sure that you're taking care of yourself in every way yeah. possible to counteract and, and kind of balance out the complete flip that your body's been yeah. throwing on yeah it's not natural that one's tricky because while i agree if you're if your absolute most important goal is to be healthy to live a long time then like jesse said that's absolutely true you should not be working shift work but that being said it's a very very it's a tricky one because if everyone decided that then what we have no doctors we have no nurses what would happen um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's a tricky one. And, but, and so this is what I mean. I think not only does there need to be more resources in place, but I think all of these organizations can do, can do a better job of even organizing the way they do shift work. So whether that's maybe someone, um, cycles off every, I don't know, every two to four months or something. And then the rest of the year, they get that regular cycle that that time to repair themselves and recover i don't know what it is but very sticky issue so it's yes. so political too right it like is one yeah. of what i'm what i'm mentioning is like this utopia idea that everything's perfect and i know that's not the way the world works i just it's like i it's a valid point it makes me sad right like people are getting sick making money and it, it's a weird thing so do the best you can, right? Yep, yep, Lots yep. of people are stuck in those situations, and without those people, then yeah. society would completely crumble. You guys, are, right. you guys are holding up the ship for sure. Well, and then there's the there's the folks too who maybe you're working shift work, but you just love your job. You yeah. can't imagine yourself doing anything else, and so those are the people that they do. They need to take those precautionary measures. So. It's pretty well outlined in the in the program right and intermittent fasting would be i mean especially if you're sleeping through the day i mean um yeah you got to extend out those right, yeah. those uh like restrict yeah. the eating windows and extend out yeah. so that your brain your brain fog exactly I mean, yeah. I can, yeah i can't relate to it because i've never done a sh like an overnight shift in my entire life but no um, nor have i talking with people at the gym um people that have really taken control of their eating and and the routine um, they love it. They thrive off it. They're like, I got all day to do my stuff. God, like, yeah. The grocery store is quiet. Like, I can do whatever I want through the day when it's light out and then I just go to work when it's dark and there's no traffic, there's no That's this. True, like, they're yeah. just eating it up, love every single second of it. But what they've done as a foundation is they've put into place measures to make sure that they're healthy in doing that. Yeah. Um, I don't even know how we got on that tangent. Intermittent fasting? I don't know either. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, and then we're talking about nurses and doctors and... All right. All well, kinds of good stuff. We're going to run out of time. Yeah. We have to wrap it up. Got to shut her down. Okay. This is will be a good test, though. I'll try... If you have another question, I'll do my best to actually answer it in less than half an hour. <laughs> All right. Put you on the clock right now. Uh, oh... Okay, one of the options for, for Brecky is the meat eater. A little note is ideally not white meat, like chicken or turkey. Ah, uh, yes. Why? Yeah. What's so, up? Yeah, so why not the chickens, why not the turkeys? This was just an attempt to try and introduce a little bit extra fat into the diet. Um, so, again, just to kind of suppress that appetite more, not make you crave that sugary snack, the chicken and turkey wouldn't be as effective because... We know that these are lean proteins, um, so kind of like the 
whatever your preference may be, there's lots of options. You can get crazy and eat the lamb or the bison or whatever. You can have some beef. So yeah, the point there was just to add a little bit additional fat. That's going to fuel the brain more in the morning as well. Because again, the priority at breakfast was to avoid the carbohydrates, which forces the brain to use these fats because it just runs better off of that. Um, this, I, when I first started doing this, it seems seemed kind of funny because all through high school, even all through university, I was really, I was, I was kind of like the peanut butter and jam guy, maybe a bowl of cereal, not the lucky charms, but kind of just your basic bowl of brand shitty cereal. Um, but when I first started doing this, it seemed funny because it was like having dinner at breakfast. But let me tell you, you feel a hell of a lot better. Your mental clarity lasts longer throughout the morning. And even for athletes, I would say this is a hell of an option. So that, that was, was okay. That a was little like bit one quicker. Minute. One minute, I think. Ah, I just good. can't do it. I feel like I'm robbing people because there's always so many things that I want to add. They'll just have to tune in next time. So, yeah. Catch, right. catch the next tangents. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that was a good one. All right. That's, uh, that's the, the meat and potatoes and then... All the extras yeah. on the reset All and the refuel desserts. program. Um, you can get a hold of Chet through Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, maybe we should do above. that. We'll give out our contact information first. I think that's what podcasters do. <laughs> yeah. That's so what the, me, what doing. you can find me on Instagram at brainignition underscore Chet. That would be probably your main source of contact or any pressing issues. You can email me at chetbinning at brainignition.ca or online at my website at brainignition.ca. Right on. I got Instagram's the main thing for me uh, at Sheriff Academy. Pretty much hit me up there. You can count on, you can count on getting me there. Um, everything else is, is I like that. Just and miss. Or come to West London CrossFit. Come yeah, kick it at the gym with both of us at this, I don't know yeah whenever you guys want we'll be there probably see most of you on a daily basis anyways <laughs> but hopefully we'll get some uh, new listeners out there yeah.